welcome friends. My name is Amber and this is a lovely arm podcast. I am like, I am laughing at myself because this is literally, literally my sixth attempt at starting this video. I feel like other podcasters would totally relate to this, but why is it so hard to start? <laughs> it always feels so awkward, but here I am with my cup of decaf coffee. I hear my laundry just went off. Uh, perfect timing. And it is Tuesday. It's April 15th, I think. Yeah. Yes, I think it's April 15th. <laughs> or maybe it's the 16th. I don't even know. It's it's one of those days. Um, yes. So I am so happy and excited to be here again already so soon. It's only been a week. I think I, I filmed last Tuesday. It was. It was last Monday. It was whatever day the eclipse happened. Was that Monday or Tuesday? I can't remember these things anymore. Um, but I filmed right the day of the eclipse because I had talked about it. So yeah, speaking of the eclipse, we were in 97% totality and it did not get near as dark as I thought it would. It was really surprising. So, but it was still really cool. I went back to my sister's house. She took a lunch break. She's a, um, she works from home. So she took her lunch break late in the day so she could see the eclipse and her husband does welding. So he had a welding helmet and my dad went back there and then my son Ian came back and, um, Lily was at work, so she didn't get to see it, but we took turns using the welding helmet to be able to, um, view the eclipse. It was pretty cool. So yes. Anyway, I, so I'm back. It's only been a week and that I feel like that is very typical for me this time of year because I get way more energy in the spring and I feel way more creative and I just like, I just, I just, oh, I love the spring guys. Mm, I'm sitting here looking out my window. Our cherry tree is completely in bloom. Most of our trees have already flowered. Um, the cherry tree is a little bit later this year flowering. Um, that, well, later than the other trees because everything was super early this year. Normally we don't have our, our flowering shrubs and trees flowering this early. It's, it's been great. And the tulips are out. The daffodils are already done. Everything's so green. We already had to mow our grass. Uh, we don't typically have to cut our grass until like late April, May. So that is super early. That just shows you how warm and very, very rainy. It's been here this spring. Mm, lots of flooding in our area uh, lately. So yes, but the, the yard is full of dandelions. I personally love dandelions. I know that people spray their yards to kill them, but um, I have a couple of neighbors that do that. <laughs> I'm like, don't do that. <sighs> but that's not even a topic for this podcast. Anyway, all that to say, I have a lot of energy and I'm looking forward to filming this today. And I can tell I'm chatty because I'm looking at the timer and I'm already three and a half minutes in and I haven't started talking about anything yarn related yet. I do want to show you this adorable mug real quick. You guys, if you know me, if you've been watching for a while, you know how much I love handmade pottery. It's one of those things I have a weakness for. Um, when I go thrifting, I'm always on the lookout for handmade pottery it's surprising how many pieces I have actually found. I have found, I would say at least half, maybe more of my handmade pottery collection I have found at thrift stores, which makes me sad, but also happy for myself. Sad for the potter that spent the time doing it. Happy that I get to enjoy it now. Um, but anyway, this mug was a gift from my daughter. She bought this for me last week. It is so cute. Those are little root vegetables. This is like a garden mug and this is made by a local potter who, um, so my daughter works in a coffee shop and that coffee shop also has a little gift shop attached to it that sells all handmade items. And she, they have a potter that sells her stuff there. And this was one of the mugs. She had so many cute mugs, um, but she bought this one for me and I just love it so much. It makes me so happy. So I made myself just some plain decaf, like a plain decaf Americano, nothing in it. 
It's my second coffee. I actually gave up caffeine. Um, I have, I'm very sensitive to caffeine. Um, it, so I don't really drink, uh, caffeine anymore, but I do love coffee. I just love the taste of coffee. It's very comforting to me. So I do still enjoy decaf coffee. So I brought that and I have a bunch of whips around me. This is the episode of whips because I have no finished objects for you guys, but I have a lot of whips. So we're going to talk about whips. I guess I, f I should mention first what I'm wearing. I oft I sometimes forget to do that. This is one of many of my ranunculi <laughs> that I have knit patterned by, uh, uh knit cafe Mod Modori, Modori Hiroshi. Yeah. I can't believe I'm forgetting the name the designer. Uh, but I've talked about this pattern so much. This I made, I think I have two summer ranunculi and this one is made with drops bell in the petrol colorway. And, um, I really like if you were watch if you've watched me in the past, particularly in the spring and summer, I used, a, I've used a lot of drops bell yarn to make summer garments. It's one of my favorite. It's very affordable and it makes a nice, it's very drapey and um, they have a nice a range of colors, array of colors. I buy mine through Wool Warehouse mostly. I know there's also some Etsy shops that you can get it from. Um, it's not something that's easily found in the United States, but because we have the convenience of international shipping, it it is much like Wool Warehouse is great. I use, have used them for most, if not all of the drops yarn that I have ordered and they always do a great job with shipping and, you know, getting everything to me in a reasonable amount of time. So that is what I'm wearing. I don't remember details for this because I didn't look back in my knitting book and I don't really keep Ravelry information either, which speaking of Ravelry, I am on Ravelry, but I'm not active on Ravelry, but I'm act somewhat active on Instagram. I have, I hadn't posted for a really long time, but again, the energy is increasing. So I have felt the urge to post more. So all of that information is down below. If you want to find me at, you know, the other places on the internet, you can look in the video description of this box of this video, video description under this video. <laughs> this is not caffeine guys. This is just me under the influence of spring. That's what it is. Okay, so let me get my little knitting notebook so I don't forget anything. Oh, I'm really excited. I want to show you this first. This I've not talked about this. This was a completely impulsive cast on yesterday. It was a completely impulsive purchase and cast on. So I love Yana of the Finnish Knitting Stories. I love her podcast. I think a lot of you probably watched it too. So um, yeah, so anyway, I've been watching her and she's been, she just finished her last episode she posted, she had just finished a shawl called the Cloudy Nora shawl. I forget the designer name. I will put a picture of it here though, so you can see it. And I, hers is, Yana's is very bright and just, which is, she loves bright colors. I, that, she's such a exuberant person, which is why I just, I get so much joy from watching her. But so she, she's just talking about this in her most recent podcast. And I thought, you know, I think I want to knit that. I have some mohair and I have the yarn and I have two colors that would go really well together. And so last night I got on and I looked at the, at the, um, pattern and I, but I realized that there weren't many people who had made that shawl, at least not on, like they didn't have project pages on Ravelry. There weren't, I think there were maybe like, I think it was 20, 20 something, like not many, but I didn't realize this, but the pattern is designed to use boucle yarn and then mohair. So one skein of boucle and one skein of mohair, but the pattern designer did say that you could use other types of yarn. I do not have boucle. I've never been drawn to knit with boucle. So, although I think it looks gorgeous in this shawl in particular, but I don't own it. And I, I'm really trying to work for my stash with my projects that I pick. So I, I thought, oh, well, I could probably still do it, but I just, the cloudy Nora literally has like little, the boucle portion of the shawl is supposed to look like little clouds and they're really cute and puffy. 
and I just thought I'm not going to get the same effect just using one strand of fingering weight yarn. So I thought, okay, I'm going to think about this before I buy this pattern and I'm going to see if I can find a different one. So I did a search on Ravelry using like the filtered and, um, I got 19 pages of results. Some of them were kind of what I was thinking of. Other ones were not at all, but I ended up finding this shawl called Puff. Puff is by Lisa Mooch or Much. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. And um, I'll put a picture up. And then I also have the pattern. Let me see if, I mean, I'm gonna put a picture up so that'll be better for you to see, but I can also just show you there, the black and white from my printer. It's not fancy. It's not very pretty there. And I looked at this and I thought, oh my gosh, I love this shawl so much. I love, I gotta, I gotta show you this again because I want to show you what I love about it. So it uses a strand of fingering weight and a strand of mohair. And then these, see these little, I don't even know what these are called. Puffs, the little puffs. So these little puffs are made from just the mohair. So you're alternating a, um, your fingering weight yarn with your mohair yarn. And then these are done by short rows. I'm pretty sure if I read through the pattern quickly. So I'm pretty sure that those little puff areas are accomplished by using short rows. So I was like, this, this is it. This is the perfect pattern. This is exactly what I was wanting. And I, so I bought the pattern. I think it was $6 maybe. And I already had the yarn, so I skeined up my yarn. This was like at 9.30 last night. I just, you know, when the motivation and the creation strikes, you just have to go for it. So let me show you mine. And this is just, I literally just cast it on and knit like five rows last night. And, you know, when you cast on a shawl from the top down, I, when I say I cast on, it was literally a cast on stitch count of six. <laughs> So I hardly did anything last night. Most of this is done today, this morning. So let me show you. Oh, we've got a blue theme going on. I've been in the mood for blue. Yellow and blue are my colors right now. And funny enough, I don't have many, I don't have many yellow or blue skeins of yarn. I, I just don't, but I'm using what I have. So this is what I have now. I, I am doing, oh, do you see that cute little that is from Laura of Back Porch Fiber Co. She has these in her Etsy shop, plus a bunch of other really beautiful minimalistic um, stitch markers. I'm not a minimalistic person, but I like my I like this knitting jewelry. <laughs> it's beautiful, so I have several of them that I've purchased from her. Uh, but anyway, so. This is feeling, it, this is just, I love this. It's filling me with so much joy right now. Let me talk about the yarn. Okay, so my fingering weight yarn is from Ren House Yarns. And sadly, I do not think she dies anymore. She is local to me. And I've had this skein of yarn for probably 10 years, which is crazy. It is one of the first skeins of indie dyed yarn that I ever bought. And I bought it, where did I get this? It was some sort of festival. I think it was an outdoor festival somewhere local. She was there. This is called Still Magnolia. Look at those beautiful, gorgeous colors. Oh, I love it. And this is a four ply, 100% superwash merino. It has 438 yards in this. So I've been saving it for like the perfect project. I actually was going to use this. I had considered using this in my Vertices Unite that I'm currently making. But I really, when I saw this pattern, I thought, no, it needs to go with this. It's, this is going to be perfect because then my contrast yarn is drops kid silk in this really beautiful blue color. Now, why am I holding, this is color number 27. It doesn't have, doesn't have a name. Why am I holding two? The pattern actually calls for one strand of mohair, but I, I, I don't care for that real thin airy mohair look that you get when you knit one strand of mohair on bigger needles 
And so I decided to hold it double just to give it more dense, uh, a more dense. Now you can see, you can still see through it, right? So it's going to be a lighter weight shawl. Oops, I'm holding it the wrong way. But it's just more, more like, I don't know. I just like it better held double. So that's what I'm doing. And, um, I actually bought this yarn to hold double with a fingering weight yarn that I got from Jody of Flower Hill, Flower Hill Fleeces. <laughs> I promise you, I am not caffeinated. I am just so happy to be here. Uh, I bought five of this and I had ordered it, five of these. I bought five of these a couple of months ago and I only need... I should only need three to do that. I'm going to knit another ranunculus, a long sleeved one. I'm not sure when, but I really probably only need three for that. So I took two of these to knit this and I should be good as far as having enough of this for both. Cause mohair it's, it's lace weight. It goes a long way. Okay. The pattern calls for size eight needles. I decided to do size six because I like it to be a little bit more thick and dense. I don't, like I said, I'm just not a big fan of the real open and airy look in knitting. I like cozy and like a hug. That's what I like. Yes. So this is my puff shawl so far and I'm enjoying it. It's a really easy. It's, you know, it's just increasing on each end. And, um, once I get into the short row sections, you know, I'll probably have to pay attention a little bit more with that. But as I said, and I think I said in last, my last episode, I actually really like doing short rows. I don't know why, but they're very satisfying to me and they don't bother me at all. I do short German short rows. I don't like wrap and turns, but I do enjoy German short rows. So yes, that is my newest cast on a very impulsive cast on but it's, it's fun. It is really fun to just be impulsive with your knitting sometimes, isn't it? And just like, like I wasn't even thinking about this. I didn't even know about this shawl until last night. Exciting. Okay. Let me take a sip of coffee. Let's talk about my Sonder sweater. <laughs> last week I was talking about this because I was like, guys, help me. I think I've knit it too big. Tell me how to fix this mistake. I, I know what I did. I know what I did now. And thanks to you guys, you reminded me. Okay. So I've mentioned this before, but I'm going through this midlife perimenopausal stage of life. And I, I mean, I feel like I'm a pretty organized, intelligent person, but lately I've just been like, Ooh, out to lunch sometimes. And, um, I had forgotten that I prefer to knit sweaters using my upper bust measurement. So up here rather than my full bust. When I measure my full bust and go by those measurements, I always seemed to knit too big. When I use my upper bust measurements, the sweaters always seem to fit me perfectly. And that was my mistake. I went by my full bust and at least one of you had mentioned it about that. And I was like, Oh my gosh, that's right. Why did I forget that? <laughs> so I think that's where the problem originated from. However, I am cruising along. I've already gotten past the, I'm completely through the yoke and I've already split for the seams. Let me put the, this little, let me put this on. Okay. I'm going to chat while I put this on my little, what are these, what are the, what's this thing called? Like the tried on tubing or barber barber pole tubing. I don't even know what it's called, but I love it. Laura from Back Porch Fiber Co. actually sent me this, this particular one. I have another one that I bought a long time ago that is not near as nice as this. It's not as flexible. I really like whatever this brand is that she sent me. Okay. My, my little alarm is going off, so I need to pause and go fix that. Hold on. Okay. I am back. All right. So let me show you what I have. Oh, I just love it. These bright colors. I, I think I'm becoming more of a bright colored person. So historically in the past, I always craved bright colors in the winter months and then neutrals in the spring and summer. And I always said it was because it was so dreary here in the winter. So that's why I wanted the bright colors. 
But now I just find myself wanting to knit with bright colors regardless of the time of year. And um, this, this is, this wool that I'm using is Good Wool by Pearl Soho. The red color, the reddish orange color is Barn Door. And this contrast color is Pink Salt. It's a very subtle pink color. And uh, did I say this was the Saunders sweater by the Petite Knitter? I can't remember if I said that. Anyway, this is what I have. So here's what I ended up doing. You guys were so helpful. You were, some of you were too smart for me though. And you were telling me to do things that I wasn't quite understanding. And maybe it's again, the brain fog that I've been experiencing, but I'm like, mm, yes. Okay. Um, and then what I ended up doing is putting a lifeline in most importantly. So I still, I still have that lifeline in. So see where that lifeline is. See that, that stripe across there. That is where the increase, the last set of increases started right after that. So I put that lifeline in because I thought if I have to tear back, I want to have a lifeline in place because if not, it's going to be stressful. It's going to be stressful if I don't have that in there. So I put that in and then what I decided to do, uh, another, another moment of not thinking clearly. So many of you were like, <coughs> Amber, that last set of increases is probably for the sleeves. So be careful, be careful changing anything <laughs> until you know. And I was like, oh yeah, that's true. Like I literally don't even know sometimes where my brain goes. So I thought, yes, that is true. So what I was going to do is go down a needle size to do the body. And I did that and I didn't like it. So, cause it looked too pulled in or something. It just didn't look right down here. So I ended up going back up to the, the regular needle size that I was using that the pattern calls for. And I did everything according to the size four. I should have knit. So I should have knit the size three, but I knit the size four instead. So pretty much what's going to happen is I think this might be a little bit looser than what I like, but I don't think it's going to be as bad as I originally thought. Um, under the sleeves, I picked up the amount that was needed. And then as I was knitting down, I thought I'm going to decrease by two and I might end up decreasing another two stitches on each side. So I'm going to just keep going and see what I think. But I also took this and I laid it down on top of another hand knit sweater, uh, yokes, color work yoke sweater that I have. Actually, I did this with two different sweaters that I have. And it looks like it's not going to be as large as I originally thought. Like it looks like it's going to be pretty close to these other two sweaters that I really feel comfortable wearing. So I'm hoping for that. Um, yeah. So I'm just kind of, I left that lifeline in just in case I had to clip it because I wanted to be able to try it, try this on. So it is clipped, but at least most of the stitches are in the, on that lifeline still in case I do have to rip the whole way back. And I will do that because I, I love this sweater. This sweater is making me very happy, even though I kind of messed up and, you know, knitted too, too big, but, um, so that's what I decided to do. I, let me see if there's anything else I wrote down. No, I think that's all. That's, I think that's all. But anyway, you guys like really pulled through for me with all of your suggestions. And I really appreciate that because I was been a little stressed out and, um, time will tell, right? We're going to see what happens with this. It does still seem a little big here, but you know, in like this puckering from the color work, but blocking, we all know blocking does miracles, right? whenever it comes to our uh, knitting with, with wool. So we're going to see, we're going to see what happens guys. Okay. So that is the update on that. Thank you all for your help. It was very much appreciated. All right. Now let's go on to my serene socks. This was the pattern. This is the pattern newly released pattern by three by the sea designs. And, um, I have done, I've progressed a little bit on it. I'm going to be honest. I haven't really been in the mood to knit socks. I've been knitting other things and crocheting other things. So I haven't really been focused much. I have, I think four pairs of socks on my needles right now. 
Um, but I did work on these. I knitted on these at church on Sunday, so I thought I would just show you. Like, there's really no reason that this should be taking me this long. I'm knitting with DK weight yarn, and the pattern's easy. So it's just because I'm not really putting a lot of time into these socks or any other socks that I'm currently knitting. The, so this yarn is DK weight sock yarn, which is a 7525 merino nylon blend by Sock Obsession Yarns. And this is the extra solar colorway. I don't think she has this colorway on her website anymore. It was something I purchased years ago. Again, the majority of my yarn purchasing was done years ago. <laughs> um, I have for the probably the past two years for sure, maybe even three, I've really been trying to work down through my stash and use what I have already because I loved it at one point. There might come a point, there are some uh, yarns that I'm not sure that I'm still loving. So I've thought about doing a D stash on Instagram. I may do that eventually, but right now I'm kind of just waiting to make sure. Uh, but yeah, this is a super squishy yarn. And Sue, so if you're watching, I sent your information this morning to um, the ladies at 3 by the Seed Designs, so you should be getting your sock pattern soon. Sorry, I got behind on emails and didn't get that to them until this morning. But yeah, so that is that. I don't have any other thing. To, I just wanted to show you. Um, yeah, okay. Last week, I shared the prayer shawl that I had made. That has since been delivered to the recipient, and I started another one. And I can't remember. I know I showed you the yarn, but I can't remember if I had an, if I had started it at all. But if I did, I had to rip it out because I made a mistake. So this is all I have now <laughs> because I had to rip it out. I had a fairly decent amount done. This, let me show you the label for this yarn. It's Lion Brand Respun. So it's recycled yarn. And this is the Cider colorway. It's a really pretty, like, rusty, brownish, orangish, orangey color. Um, so, what I don't know what I did. I don't know what I did, but I some the reason I had to rip it out is because I somehow had three or four extra stitches on one side of the middle increase than I did on the other. So I had a, a lopsided shawl. And then when I got, I think I was going into the second set of baubles and things just weren't lining up and I was confused. And then I realized because I counted. This is the thing about crochet. I feel like you have to be on top of your counting because unless you're doing like circular or granny squares, it's harder to read the edges of your crocheting. Perhaps that's what happened. I don't know. I really don't know how that happened. Um, but I ripped it out. I ripped, I ripped the whole way back to like right here. And I just worked on this. I mean, this is a really fast pattern. Oh, did I tell you Stormborn? <laughs> Stormborn wrap. The designer's name is for the thrills, not for the thrills, for the frills. <laughs> for the frills and I am knitting it using a hook that is size I or 5.5 millimeter hook. Yeah. So I'm going to get back to work on this because I know I have somebody I want to give this to. This is going to be another prayer shawl. So I just wanted to give a little update on that. Okay. My last whip that I'm going to show you is another crochet project. This project was inspired by Amy of Noble Character Crafts. She also has a podcast. I will link anything I mention, I'll link down below. And if I forget, just let me know in the comments and I'll edit the description. But she was, so she is a prolific knitter and crocheter. I, I don't even know how she does it. <laughs> just don't even know. But she makes beautiful things and she's been making a lot of crocheted blankets. She's been making this blanket called the Ripple. No, hold on. Hold on a second. I wrote it down. Let me find it. The Rainbow Ripple Baby Blanket. She's made multiple of these. 
and her last podcast she was showing one that she had just finished and it's basically what well, I'll just put I'll put a picture up here of it it's a star like a star shaped crocheted blanket and I really love that star shape and I don't know why because normally I'm not drawn to irregularly shaped blankets but I really liked this and th so I thought I'm gonna make one so the pattern was free I got onto Ravelry I found it I, I was reading through it and then I don't know how I found this other pattern which was also free but I did and it was another star shaped blanket it's called the compass blanket and it's very similar but the where it is different is it has these baubles on it and I that is what really drew me into that so let me show you what I have here I don't have a lot but I have some this color this color is coming up in my podcast so much this week so here it is it's hard to hold it so you can see the shape okay but see these baubles how they run out from the center kind of like spokes on a on a wheel wheel okay so here we go when I started this like when I started this part right here I'm gonna be honest I don't know what was I was having a hard time with these baubles popcorn stitch whatever you want to call them I think it was actually because of the way that the designer had written the, the instructions on how to do it what I ended up doing was getting on YouTube and um, looking up how to do a popcorn stitch but you could also this is done a lot differently than how I normally make my crocheted baubles that's why I was confused but then looking at this in retrospect I could have just made it my own way of making popcorns or baubles so if you decide to to make this just keep that in mind because it doesn't it's not going to it doesn't matter how you make them it's not going to affect your stitch count or anything like that so I probably if I would make this again which I feel like I, I will make this again because it's a really fun pattern I will just make the baubles using my regular way of making it just know if you knit this you can just make the baubles however your heart desires to make it it will be perfectly fine it's not gonna mess up your stitch count um, just make sure you put your chain two in between so yeah this is fun this is a really fun pattern I'm really enjoying crocheting right now because it's so fast it's so much faster than knitting I am using lion brand Mandela and I had three skeins of this yarn this one. oops this is my first one I had three skeins of this yarn so I think what I'm probably gonna do is just keep crocheting until I use up all three skeins I think that it's meant to be like a baby size blanket but I'm just gonna keep going just gonna keep going it'll use up yarn and it's it's like I, I just it's so fun I'm just having a lot of fun with this <laughs> so you can see I'm getting down there on my first skein and then I have two more left yeah so having a lot of fun I'm using an H hook which is also a five millimeter hook in case you are wondering I'm I don't know that that's the hook that the pattern calls for but that's the one that works best with the yarn that I'm using okay so those are all of my whips at least my active whips that I want to talk about I actually have quite a few other things but I haven't touched them for a while um, so I want to take a moment to announce the giveaway winner for the skein or the sock set where did I put that yeah here we go from Sweet Mountain Crafts the paddleboard DK weight sock set that um, last episode I just asked you to leave a comment saying you were interested in letting me know where you were uh, viewing from so I used random comment gem gen generator mm -hmm. thank you guys for bearing with me and here we go so LC Hughes 7130 you are the winner of this sock set so if you could please 
email me. My email is down below in the video description. I will get this mailed out to you. I'm going to just need your, like your name and your mailing address and I will get it sent out to you. So thank you guys for all of your support and for watching and for commenting and, um, congratulations Elsie on winning this. So just a few other things, and then I'm going to go ahead and wrap this episode up. I wanted to just talk about two things. First of all, I am thinking about doing a special episode about single skein projects that um, would use up fingering weight yarn. So in the past, I've done some, I've done like a scrappy episode. I've done a road trip episode. I've done shawl, simple shawls. I can't even remember all of the special episodes that I've done, but I have a lot of skeins of fingering weight yarn that I could use them for socks, but some of them I'm like, they're so beautiful. I don't know if I want to wear those on my feet. I kind of like commercial sock yarn better. It's, it's very durable and then I, it's cheaper. So if I get a hole in it, it's not as heartbreaking as when I get a $30 skein of, you know, indie dyed yarn gets a hole in the socks, then that's a little bit more, um, traumatic, but I was thinking about doing an episode and doing some research on Ravelry on projects that just use a single skein or a, some amount of a single skein of fingering weight yarn. So let me know if you guys think that sounds something you'd be interested in. Um, I might, I just, I don't know. I feel like that would be good to have like a bundle like that on Ravelry where I could just go when I was wanting to use just one skein of my fingering weight yarn. So I was thinking about doing that. Also, I'm going to be doing some traveling here over the next couple of months. And one in particular is going to require flying, which I have not flown in 14 years since we went and adopted Sergei from Ukraine. So <laughs> it's been a long time. And, um, and I wasn't even a knitter back then, or I was just a beginning knitter. I don't even think I was, I think I was just crocheting at that point, but I wasn't even into it so much that I would take it on the plane. I think I just read on the plane. Like, I don't know what I did on the plane, but I don't, I know I didn't take any crafty things because I was very limited in what I could pack because we were going to be there for at least five to six weeks and I needed to be, we were taking stuff over for the orphanage and in one of our suitcases. So I had to be really careful about what I took. So I didn't take any crafty things to do. So do you guys have any tips? I am, I've heard horror stories of having to throw out needles and I just don't want that to happen. And I guess I should look on the, whatever airline I'm going with, I guess I should probably contact them just to make sure but I am absolutely clueless when it comes to traveling with my knitting, like air, airline, airplane travel. So if you have any tips on that, let me know, because like I said, I'm pretty clueless about that. Um, yeah. And I think that's it. I am looking forward to those trips. Uh, we're going to do a family trip to our friends in Charleston area of South Carolina. We do that annually in the spring. We're going to be doing that. And then the, we're going, my son and I are, my son Ian and I are flying to Florida in May for he's, it's some, a business thing for him and I'm going with him. So yeah, so that'll be interesting too, but I just love spring. I'm just so happy that spring is here. <laughs> I used to think summer was my favorite season, but it's definitely spring. All the birds, everything coming back to life the trees just sprouting their beautiful green leaves and all the flowers. I just absolutely love it. It feels so good. Um, we've had so much rain and it's like a, it, to the level where it's been flooding a lot. Um, but then we've had three days of sun too. It's so, yeah, it's been wonderful. The, the sun, the sunny days, I think it was 80 three the other day, which is so weird, but what's it like where you guys live? Where do you guys live and where, what's it like? Cause I know this is abnormal for us this winter. We had a pretty mild winter last year. I guess it's no longer winter. This is an abnormally early spring. Our spring came really early this year. And I feel like I've been hearing that a lot from people all across the United States. So that have the seasons that they, you know, transition through. 
But um, yeah, I think that's all. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up and get it edited and out to you guys. And Elsie, again, just contact me with your mailing address so I can get that mailed out to you. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.